insert, update, and delete an entity from a database using a DB context. Hit the subscribe button as we continue with part three of how to get started with EF Core. We're going to start by inserting a product entity that we created in the last part of this course. So in the EF Core application project, we go to add a new folder. I'm going to name the folder as models and create a new class. We're going to call this class insert update product. We'll mark it as public and remove the using statements. Now in the product entity, we created a name and description and a price, and that's what we're going to be using to insert an entity into the database. So we'll copy and paste that into the model. Next, we're going to create a service to insert the product entity into our database. In the EFCore application project, we go to add a new folder, which we're going to call services. Within that, we're going to create a new interface. So we select interface and we're going to call it I product service. Mark it as public, remove the using statements. And the method that we're going to create, it will return a task of integer, and it's going to be called insert async. Within this method, we'll pass in an instance of the insert update product model that we just created, and we're going to call it insert product. We're then going to create a class. So we select class, which we're going to label product service for the implementation. Once again, mark it as public. And we're going to implement the I product service. We need to implement the method that we just created, the insert async. And then we need to pass in an instance of the DB context. We we'll create a constructor and we're passing the type of I round the code EF core DB context. And we we'll name it round the code EF core DB context. We'll store the instance of that in a read only field. And now we can insert the product entity into the database. So to do that, we need to create a new instance of our product entity. We need to import the namespace for that, which is round the code efcore.domain.entities. We can see that's now been added to the class. So for the name, we pass it as an insert product.name. Do the same for description. And also for the price. Now, of course, you could use AutoMapper for something like this, but we're going to keep it simple. We then need to add the product entity to our DB context. So we call our round the code DB context and we call the products DB set and we call add async and we'll add the product entity to it. At this stage, it's added it to the DB context, but we haven't saved it to the database. To do that, we call await our DB context and save changes async. Now, when we save the changes, it will append the ID to the product.id, so we can return that as the return type. We're now going to use the product service in a web API controller. But in order to do that, we need to add it to the IOC container in our web API project. So we go into the program.cs file, we call builder.services add scoped. The service is called i product service, and the implementation is product service. We can now set up our web API controller. So we go to add controller. I'm going to select API controller empty. I'm going to name it product controller. We're going to pass in an instance of our product service. So we're going to be storing it in a read only field. And then we're passing the instance for a constructor of the class. So we pass in the I product service as a parameter and then store the instance in the read only field. Then we'll set up our endpoint to insert the product entity. So it's going to be a post, a HTTP post request. We'll mark it as public, mark it as async. It's going to return a task of I action result. And it's going to be named insert async. We'll pass in the type of model, which is insert update product, which we created earlier on in the video. And we'll call it insert product. 
we get our ID, so we're going to store it in a variable and we call product service insert async and we pass in the instance of our insert update product. We're going to return a 201 response, which is a created response. The URI is going to be empty, but for the value, we're going to just return the ID. So the new ID that's created as part of the entity that's created in the database. Let's run the application and see if it's going to work for us. Our endpoint has been set up to insert the entity. Let's try it out. So let's give it a name of my product. We've got a description of my description and we've given it a price of 20. By executing the endpoint, we're getting a 201 response and we can see we've got a new ID. We're going to view SQL Server Object Explorer. We go to our local DB. We go to the tables and we open up the shop.product table. We can see that our product has been added to the database. We're now going to create a new method, but this time it's to update a product. In our iProduct service interface, we need to create a new method. We're going to return a type of task. We're going to name it update async. And for parameters, we need to add the ID of an integer and a type of insert update product model, which we're going to name update product. In the product service, we now need to implement the method that we just created. And this is where we'll perform the database update. From the DB context, we need to get an instance of our product entity. From the DB context, we call round the code if core DB context. We call our products DB set and we call single async. And we pass in the ID to get the right product entity that we wish to update. Now we use single async because we assume that there's going to be one. If there isn't one, it will throw an exception. And then we can just update the name, description, and the price from our parameter. So we call update product.name. Do the same for the description. And the same for the price. Then in order to update the database, we call our DB context and the save changes async method. We then need to add our update web API endpoint. We go back into the product controller. And we're going to expect a HTTP put request. We need to pass in an ID parameter, which we're going to get from the parameter of the endpoint. We mark it as public async. Once again, a return of task I action result. I'm going to call it update async. Pass in the integer of the ID. And then a type of insert update product, which will contain the details of the product that we wish to change. I'm going to name it product. Call an instance of our product service, the update async method, pass in the ID and the update product instance from the parameter. And then we'll just return a 204 response, which is no content. We can see that our update product web API endpoint has been created. We can see it's passing in an ID as part of the URI. This represents the ID here, which passes it in as a parameter in the method. Let's try it out. So let's give it the ID of one because that's the only record that's in the database. We're going to update the name to my name two, the description to my description two and the price to nine. When executing that, we're now getting a 204 no content response. We want to make sure that the data has been updated in the database. So we load up the shop.product data and we can see that's been updated with the records that we wanted. Now, if we try to run this with an ID that doesn't exist in the database, so let's change that to two and execute the endpoint. We're now getting a 500 response. The reason being, if we go into the product service and we scroll down to the update async method, it's calling single async here. Now what this is doing is it's expecting one record to return. If it doesn't return one record, it will throw an exception. We also want the ability to delete an entity from the database. But in order to do that, we need to add a DB context method into our I round the code EF core DB context. We go into that file and the method in question returns the type of entity entry, 
It's called remove and we pass in an object type with the entity. In the iProduct service, we'll create a new method to delete an entity. We go into the iProduct service. Once again, it returns a type of task and the method will be called delete async. And this time we just pass in the ID as the parameter. We'll copy and paste that and we'll add it into the product service. Mark it as public async. And this is where we can delete the entity from the database. If we go back to the update, we're going to ensure that we get the product from the DB context. And then for this, we just call our DB context, we call the remove method and pass in the entity. And then to delete it from the database, we call the DB context and save changes method. To add the web API endpoint for that, we go back into our product controller. And it's going to be passed through as a HTTP delete request. Pass in the ID as the parameter. And then we'll mark the method as public async. It expects a task of I action result as the return type. Call it delete async and pass in the integer as the parameter. Then we just await the product async delete async method and pass in the ID parameter. And then simply just return a 204 no content response. The endpoint has been created. Let's try it out. Pass in an ID of one. We're getting a 204 response. So let's look and make sure that our record in the database no longer exists. Let's view the data for shop.product. And we can see that the product is no longer in the database. Watch the next part to continue learning about Entity Framework Core. And if you want to watch any video in our Get Started with EF Core course, check out the playlist at roundthecode.com slash EF course. There is also a link for it in the YouTube video description.